60 Minutes Rewind. The phrase, the greatest show on earth, usually refers to the circus. But a man named Peter Gelb, who runs the Metropolitan Opera in New York City, is doing everything he can to change that. He is reinventing opera, making it accessible to more people, even those who always thought they would hate it. Gelb wants opera to become as popular and populist as it was 100 years ago. He believes people would come out in droves for opera if they just had a chance to see it. There's no other place where you can see such monumental staging. Elaborate sets and a cast of hundreds. And raw emotion. Beautiful women. Defiant and doomed. And special effects that you might expect to find in a Hollywood movie. But it's not just about the magic. The Met is above all about extraordinary voices. Some of the very best voices in the world. Beginning with rehearsals, we followed a new production, a reimagining of Giuseppe Verdi's masterpiece, Rigoletto. Polish tenor Piotr Bekzala belts out one of Verdi's greatest hits. What's the difference between singing at the Met and singing in the smaller European houses? It's the most important mm. opera house in the world. Do you get more nervous before Met performance than at other performances? Maybe a little. Maybe a little because I know how important this, it is here. <laughs> Serbian baritone Zelko Lucic sings the role of Rigoletto. <laughs> This is the this kind of crown of our business coming to New York and Metropolitan because I know what kind of people, what singers sang here and stood at the, the same places where I'm. In fact, when you sing the first time at the Met, yeah. is it a very big deal? Yes, because that's your chance to prove yourself. And if you were, you know, if you, how, how can I say, blew it out? If you blow it. If you blow it, it's you're done. done. That's it. Unlike divas of the past, German soprano Diana Damro is a working mom, nursing a two-month-old baby and a cold. <laughs> she has a lot to contend with. You were quite sick last week. Yes, <clears throat> I'm still a bit, but I tried not to sing all the time and reduce a little bit. Just a little bit? I mean, mom. you were belting it out. No, no, only at the end. the only thing going on here today. There can be as many as 10 operas in production at once. Right now, the Met stage is being set up for a new version of Richard Wagner's Parsifal, a sacred opera that's never been done like this before. 
dozens of raven-haired maidens sloshing around in a river of blood. 1,600 gallons of the stuff heated so the singers don't get cold. Overseeing all this is that worried-looking man, Peter Gelb, the Mets general manager. He says opera is a blood sport. I go in every day to the Met knowing that this is a, there is a battle to be, to be waged and fought for the survival of this art form. And uh, so I'm here to do that. This is your seventh year at the Met? Yes, I'm still here. Seven years micromanaging one of the biggest theaters in the world and one of the most expensive to run. The Met employs over 3,000 people. It spends more than a million dollars a day on its productions. We are the closest thing to an opera factory that one could possibly imagine, except the difference is, is that all of our factory workers are the greatest artists in the world. Right now. <laughs> We're doing seven performances a week, constantly going from opera to opera, which is why our stage is busier than any other opera house in the world. It's like a giant self-sufficient ocean liner. But that liner was in danger of sinking when Gelb took over in 2006. It was awash in debt with falling attendance and an audience which might not be around much longer. It was way behind the times, and it had become so mired in an in, in image of elitism that unless that changed, unless it was prepared to become accessible um, as opera once had been, uh, it was going to be very difficult for the Met to survive. To make opera more accessible, Gilb opened up dress rehearsals to the public for free and put up huge screens in Lincoln Center and Times Square. And he did something which has never been done before. He began transmitting live performances in HD to movie theaters around the world, now in 64 countries. Those broadcasts are money makers. This year, they grossed nearly $60 million, more than three quarters of total tickets sold. There's no opera company in the world today that has a global audience that the Met has because of these live HD transmissions. But you're still $100 million in debt. How does that relate to everything you've done? Opera is always in debt. From a business point of view, opera shouldn't exist. I mean, it only exists because there are enough people who love opera and my job is to try to persuade them that uh, it is necessary to change in order to keep the art form alive. Otherwise, otherwise it will die with them. The story will continue after this. One of Gelb's strategies to keep opera alive is to update the classics like Rigoletto. After four weeks of rehearsals, it's opening night. Rigoletto has been performed over 800 times here, but this audience, almost 4,000 here and another 350,000 watching in HD as far away as Tokyo, is about to see a radically different version. Ten minutes before curtain, you can cut the tension with an A-flat. <laughs> Ready. It seems that I'm not nervous, but yeah, of course I am. Oh, this is a big thing. So I'm, uh, I'm kind of, you know, cooking somewhere here. You have this feeling that everything's, that you're going to throw up. <laughs> Maestro to the pit, please. Maestro to the orchestra pit, please. <laughs> Giuseppe Verdi set his tale of debauchery, lust, and vengeance in a corrupt court in 16th century Italy. This one plays out in its modern equivalent. <laughs> Las Vegas in the 1960s. The heartthrob, the duke, is now a big shot singer and casino owner with an eye for the ladies. Oh. 
The Met provides subtitles for its HD broadcasts, and those have been revamped too. It's a big roll of the dice for Peter Gill. Will the old guard be ready for showgirls, a pole dancer, even a sharp-dressed hitman? His name is Spadafuccio, one of the longest names in opera. When you decided to put on Regaletto in Las Vegas, what worried you the most? That I was heading for a disaster, but it's a risk worth taking. The risk of doing nothing is the greatest risk of all. In the last act, the mood changes. Rigoletto will not have a happy ending. Very few operas do. Let's go and die. Uh, yeah, but peacefully. <laughs> The plot is much too complicated to explain, but we'll just tell you, Rigoletto's daughter sacrifices herself to save the Duke. It will be a spectacular death scene, with the Met pulling out all its stops, from the chorus backstage, to the lighting team, to the HD crew sending it out live around the world. The hitman offs the daughter and stuffs her into the trunk of a 1960 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. She breathes her last in her father's arms. Wait for it. At the final curtain, the audience jumps to its feet. Even the orchestra applauds. That doesn't happen every day. For Gelb, it was a good night. But in opera, as in so many other things, you're only as good as your next night.